Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to learn how to start accepting payments with Stripe instead of your React Native applications. And I have my good friend Charlie here who's going to show us how to do it. So Charlie, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what do you do? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, it's nice to meet everyone. Uh, like Cecil said, my name's Charlie. I'm a software engineer at Stripe. And one of my kind of jobs is to maintain our React Native library, which essentially, uh, or our core React Native library, because we're starting to get a bit more options as React Native kind of grows and grows. Um, but our core React Native library is about exposing all of the same uh, functionality that's currently offered in our native libraries around payments to React Native users to make it really easy to accept payments in a, in a React Native app. Nice. And I know React Native supports iOS, Android, and probably a couple other platforms too. But it sounds like I could compile and run on these different, you know, these different options and be able to accept payments there too, which sounds like a, like a great option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and basically our goal is to kind of replicate your web experience since we've seen so many React developers come over to mobile since React Native has kind of made it really yeah. approachable um, while still giving you the same performance uh, that a native library gives you from Stripe iOS and Stripe Android. Gotcha. Well, let, why don't we take a look at your setup and see uh, see how we how this thing works? Yeah, would love to. Uh, all right, so here I've just got you know VS Code open on the left, where I think you know ninety percent of us do our JavaScript development, and then uh, an iOS simulator and an Android emulator running over here on the right. Um, what we're going to do is use Stripe React Native to kind of accept payments, uh, let's say for a kilogram of sweet potatoes, uh, right there in our React Native app. Um, and what we're going to do is use something called the payment sheet, which kind of gets rid of our need to do any UI development besides one button. Um, so that kind of really smooths things out and makes it uh, super easy for us. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of hop right in. We've got our normal just app functional component here, a view, a text, and our image source of sweet potatoes. I'm going to delete this uh, and uncomment our, our kind of fleshed out uh, app component here and go through exactly what we've added. So number one, we've got our Stripe provider component. Um, this we're importing from Stripe React Native. What it does in the background is initialize Stripe uh, with our account that we're getting via the publishable key that we're passing in here. This is a string that you'll get from Stripe. And then also our merchant identifier. This is a string that you'll get from, I uh, from Apple um, and essentially just allows us to use uh, Apple Pay really, really easily. So we've got our, our Stripe provider, which is initializing Stripe. And then within that, we put our checkout page. Uh, right here, we've got our button, which is just a normal React Native button, except for our on-press, uh, which is calling buy. So we can take a look at what buy is doing right up here. Um, and it's presenting our payment sheet. But before you present your payment sheet, you actually have to initialize it. And that's kind of where the meat of payment sheet goes. So if I scroll up here, uh, you can see We've got our hook right here, which we're kind of using as an import statement. Stripe React Native has a whole bunch of hooks that make things really easy. So for example, here we were using use payment sheet and that exposes three things that we'll find really useful. Uh, an init payment sheet function, which does exactly what it sounds, initializes our payment sheet. Um, our present payment sheet function, which again, does exactly what it sounds like it does, presents our payment sheet. And then a loading Boolean. This loading Boolean uh, returns true or false based on the payment sheets kind of current state. So if uh, it's in the process of opening or closing, it'll come back as uh, true, it's loading. And so that way we can do things in our UI, like show a spinner or disable our button, which is kind of how we're using it right now. But yeah, anyways, so uh, right on you know app render, we're calling initialize payment sheet, and this is gonna call init payment sheet. Uh, you can see that right here. And we're kind of passing in the base options right now. Uh, what's required is a customer ID uh, a customer ephemeral key secret, and then a payment intent client secret. All three of these, you're actually going to be generating on the server side, um, which is pretty typical of all Stripe implementations just for security reasons. We're grabbing these from our, our local host server uh, right down here, um, just a normal fetch call. I can kind of show that method over here. Um, so yeah, we're just initializing the Stripe class, grabbing our customer, in your real life application, you'll probably be grabbing your customer by like their email or some other kind of piece of data. Um, but kind of for our example, we're just grabbing our first customer. Here you can see we are generating an ephemeral key. And then on the next line, we're generating our payment intent. This is where you define things like 
the amount that the payment's going to be for, the currency it's in, uh, the customer it's associated with, and what payment method types that you want them to be able to use. This will come back to later, uh, what's commented out. But yeah, then we're just kind of responding with those three pieces of data uh, in JSON, passing them in here to initialize the payment sheet. And then if we receive back an error from init payment sheet, we know something went wrong and we can handle it. Otherwise, we're just going to say, you know, we're ready to collect payments and kind of unblock or undisable this button. And yeah, like I said, in the buy on press callback for our button, we're just calling present payment sheet, checking for an error. Otherwise, we know it was successful. So let's see if everything works as it should. Um, you can see we can add our payment method here. You know, we'll just use Stripe's test card, uh, add the zip code, press the pay button. Um, and it should go through, get a nice little green button there. Payment was confirmed successfully. Cool. So it worked. All right. And then we can uh, open it up on Android. Cool. And so you kind of saw it before on the iOS side because I had tested this flow uh, right before recording. But what Payment Sheet does is save our previous credit card to the customer. And that way, if they, you know, as you can see here, log in on a different device, but it's the same customer or even the same device, doesn't matter. It'll save their payment method so that way the customer doesn't have to like re-enter their credit card every time they use Payment Sheet. Um, but yeah, same thing on Android. You can just kind of go through, fill in your, your zip code, click pay. And there we go. Confirmed successfully. Nice. And that's Payment Sheet basically. So let me let me run, run through this really quickly. You install like the Stripe React Native SDK, right? So that's inside of your React Native project. In the back end, you created a payment intent. And then now in your front end, right? Because we have two applications. There's a front end piece and there's a back end piece. Mm -hmm. In a front end piece, you're going to make a request over to that back end just to get the payment intent information. And again, we do this for security reasons, for PCI compliance and, and things of that nature. And then now you're going to use that information you got from that payment intent to initialize the, the payment sheet, right? And so now you set it up, you give it some configuration information, and then now on button click, you're going to say, well, present payment sheet, right? And it's going to show us the UI and we're going to kind of go through, you know, adding, you know, adding the credit card and the, you know, the zip code and all the information you need to actually process the payment, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And great point bringing it up. Um, so the actual package is at Stripe, Stripe React Native. This is on NPM, so you can download it with Yarn or NPM, kind of whatever you use. Um, yeah, but then other than that, you just have your, your server side, which if you're collecting payments on the web, you probably already have up and running, and you just plug your React Native uh, app into that, and it should work essentially the same. Okay, so then when I think about like building React apps that run on the web, and I'm using something like Stripe Checkout, sometimes what happens is that like if I want to enable um, a new payment method or something like that, I can just go into dashboard and I could, you know, hit the little checkbox, right? And turn it on. And then it'll just, it'll just, you know, materialize on the page for me. Is that the same thing with, with this? Like, can I just, you know, add additional payment methods without having to, you know, redo a bunch of code or redeploy my app. And, and now I'll just have those options available for me whenever the, the payment sheet shows up. Yeah, exactly. That's, so that's a really good question. Adding payment methods is really simple with the payment sheet. There's actually two different cases we can think of. So the first is exactly what you're talking about, payment methods like you would in Stripe Checkout. So something like paying with a US bank account. Um, the other one is you know your native wallets like Apple and Google Pay. So Apple and Google Pay, you do need to make a client side change, which is very simple. It's basically just passing in a configuration object for each of those to initialize payment sheet or init payment sheet. So here we just are passing in you know Apple Pay, Google Pay with some params that each require. We'll save that uh, and you know, let's just reload our app over in the terminal. Um, and now we should see you know, Apple Pay presented as an option right here. Nice. And then we can click Apple Pay uh, and do that. And, and Google Pay essentially functions the exact same way. Um, but then what you're talking about, adding a new payment method that's you know, not a card at all. Maybe it's a US bank account, maybe it's a firm, maybe it's Afterpay. So what we're going to do to do that is navigate over here to our, our server side. And when we're creating our payment intent, we're passing in this like payment method types array. Before we just had card, um, but now we're passing in, you know, what is this? Five different payment methods. We'll save that and reload our server. 
wait for this uh, button to initialize. Oh, let's reload that again. Perfect. All right, there we go. Uh, and if we click buy now, add a new payment method, we can see payment sheet now displays all these new payment methods that we just added on the server side without making any changes to the app or anything like that. So let's say you want to start accepting uh, ideal payments or something like that. You can just update your server, not have to kind of deploy through Apple and Google's uh, app store review process, you kind of just start collecting this new payment method with, with very little code, essentially one line of code. Yeah. And I love how easy that is. And I think about, you know, as we try to reach customers, you know, from, from different parts of the world that don't only use credit cards, but again, you might want to use Klarna or Afterpay or use your bank account instead of giving your know, credit card number. So it really is just talking about giving our users the option to choose how they want to pay. Right. And even when they want to pay, when you think about things like Klarna and Afterpay, that break them up into little pieces. So I think having this this level of, of customization built into the SDK and, and seeing how easy it is for us to do these things with React Native is amazing. Yeah, exactly. And especially me, you know, when I kind of came at Stripe and arrived here, I was in that headspace of thinking, oh, I bet the whole world uses credit cards. And then, you know, after one week here, I learned that credit cards is a a uh, very different thing worldwide and some places rely on totally different methods of payment um and so this just helps you reach a global audience of customers rather than the cus or customers with the payment methods you inherently assume they're using gotcha this is great well hey charlie thank you so much um really appreciate you coming on and, and showing us those demos and thank you all for watching if you're interested in learning about more how you can integrate stripe inside of your react native applications stay tuned because we're going to have more videos and also, if you're interested in this particular demo, uh, check out the link in the description below or even in the link that's showing on the screen right now. And you'll be able to go over there and download the code and try it on your own machines. But until then, see you next time. <laughs>